Welcome to our Good News program. We're so thankful that you tuned in. We are studying in the book of Ephesians. This is Ephesians and Colossians embody the highest revelation that God has given to man. And we see in verse chapter 1, verse 3, that we are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Now, this is the believer's position in Christ. And this is the most important thing for us to know. We're rich in Christ. We are an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. And then we see the lessons that we saw in Ephesians chapter 2 is we were dead in trespasses and sin. We were a child of the devil. And then we were children of wrath. But God... In verse 4, but God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherein he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together. For by grace are you saved, quickened us together with Christ. And then verse 6, and hath raised us up together to make us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And then verse 7 is one of the most important verses in the whole Bible. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches. Exceeding riches. Now this is one of the richest verses in the whole Bible. The exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. And then we saw in chapter 2, the church, a temple for the habitation of God through the Spirit. This is the Lord Jesus Christ and the doctrine of Christ is the foundation of everything in this book. It's all about Christ. This the apostles taught and this is what we are to teach. This is what they taught, that the Lord Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone. Now, if you don't know this Bible verse, this is another one that you need to know. Acts 4, verse 12. There neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. There is no other name but Christ to get to heaven. No other God. And then we're going to see, after we're finished with, these lessons, with this prayer, that we are going to see what the foundation is, and it's all Christ. Everything is built upon Christ. And if you don't know him today, Call upon him to save you, and he will give you eternal life and forgiveness of sin. And remember, that is the only free gift in the world. The only free gift in the world. Because he teaches us in this book... He that spared not his own son, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Have you ever thanked God for the sunshine that you're able to breathe? He gives you your breath. This is the only time that you have, that you are sure of, 
that you can call upon him to save you because he gives you every breath you draw. When you take your last breath, it's too late. You're either going to a place of torment or your spirit and soul are going into the glory of the gates of glory. And those that have never accepted Christ is going to a place of torment. And that means you will never quit having pain. You will be in darkness forever and ever because it is the blood of Jesus Christ that makes an atonement for your soul. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. This is the good news today. Accept this gift of eternal life while I'm praying. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we truly have such deep, deep gratitude for all that Thou hast given to us to bring us into this wonderful masterpiece, the masterwork in our bodies, to give us a body of light. And we are to walk as children of light. Give this gift to every person today, and if they don't know anything more, then that our Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross to save sinners that are lost. He came to seek and to save you today. Just call upon him and say, I believe the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses me from all sin. I believe that Christ, there's not a name under heaven whereby anyone can be saved except the name of Jesus Christ. Under this whole universe, not another name, but Jesus Christ. So we're thanking thee and praising thee for 100 fold today. In Christ's name, we pray. Amen. So as we see this, we know that today the chief cornerstone is our Lord Jesus Christ. And we see this in 1 Corinthians 3. 1 Corinthians 2 first. We'll go to 1 Corinthians 2 because this is so important that we see what 1 Corinthians 2 teaches us. And this is another thing that we've been teaching, that you can never know this book apart from knowing the Holy Spirit is your teacher that you've been born again. He says in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9, But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for those that love him. But God, verse 10 of 1 Corinthians 2, but God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, the deep things of God. And this is something that you cannot understand. And I'm going to give this to you in verse 14. The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Can you imagine what this is like? When we talk to someone about Christ, he cannot understand them until he's born again. He must be born again. And this is what he teaches us in these lessons. And then 1 Corinthians 3, 1 Corinthians 3, 11. Well, we can start with verse 10. Well, let's start with verse 9. 1 Corinthians 3, 9. For we're laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandmen. Ye are God's building. We are the building of Christ. Think of this, every person that's listening. You're not your own. You're bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are his. I belong to him. He paid the highest price for me. And then we see in verse 10, according to the grace of God, which is given unto me. As a wise master builder. You see, I have this master work that he's done through me, in me, because I have accepted this gift. 
I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth upon. For the other foundation can no man lay than that is lain, which is Jesus Christ. Now this is, if a man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble, every man's work shall be manifest. And we showed you, that was one of your Bible verses, we're all going to stand before him for the things done in our bodies, whether they be good or whether they be bad. We are his workmanship, and it teaches us this, in the wood, hay, and stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. Fire cannot touch gold, silver, and precious stones, but wood, hay, and stubble, your works are going to be burned up unless you're a child of God. Works can never get you to heaven. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereon, he shall receive a reward. Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give to every man according as his works shall be. So we see this is what Jesus Christ is doing today, and we see that this is the most important thing for us to build upon that foundation, and that foundation is Christ. And then we see in 1 Peter 2, 6 and 7. 1 Peter 2, 6 and 7. Now we can see in these wonderful lessons that he has given to us, 1 Peter 2, wherefore also it contained in the scripture, behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and in he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Verse 7, 1 Peter 2, 7, unto you therefore which believe is precious, you're precious, his blood is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. And then in verse 9, now this is the believer's life in view of his sevenfold position and the vicarious suffering of Christ. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. You see, we become a saint of God when we accept the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior, born by the Spirit of God. A, an holy nation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into light, out of the power of Satan unto God, which in times past, this is how you, we were, not a people like other unsaved people, well, not to live like them, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have attained mercy. And then, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that were as they speak against you as evildoers, they may be your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God. You are to glorify God in everything we do. And so this is the chief cornerstone, which is Christ. And now, let me ask you, do you know this wonderful gift? Have you received the gift? It must be received. Christ is the foundation stone. 1 Corinthians 3, 11, we just read that. And then Ephesians 2, 20 and 22. Now we go back to Ephesians and we read the rest of this chapter. And here's what he says. And now this is, therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints. Now you're a saint of God and of the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles, Jesus Christ himself, being the chief cornerstone in whom all the building 
fitly framed together, groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord. We are to be holy, and we are to be pure. And whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of God. How? Through the Spirit. Not any other way for any person to be saved. And then what's going to happen to this, the Gentile world powers in Daniel 2.34. He is to be the smiting stone of destruction for all that are lost. All that are lost. So in whom this building fitly framed together groweth yet, this is a most important thing, unto a holy temple. We're holy, and we are to live holy lives. So the building is the true church, as we have seen in these lessons. And we must know these truths, because God is the one that we're going to stand before in, when we are raptured to be with the Lord. We're going to be judged by our works. So how beautifully this illustrates all that God is doing today building this wonderful body of believers, and he is the head. So we see in these lessons also, he chooses and prepares the material and puts each in its proper place. What a contrast with man's methods in tr trying to increase church membership. The divine revelation is forgotten. 1 Corinthians 12, we have to get these truths in us to know that he is the one that is building the church. He's the one that saves people. We're to give out his word, and then he will save those by his word and the spirit of God working. So here's what we have. Now I want you to ask yourself, for by as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many as one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jew or Gentile, whether we be bond or free, and have all been made to drink of that Spirit. And then verse 19 and 20. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, but one body. What are we to do? Bring in many sons into the kingdom of God. That should be our goal in everything that we do. So today, Christians have departed from the faith and these revelations concerning the one church and its architect. Our, the Lord Jesus Christ is the one that is building the body of believers, and he is the head, and he does the thinking. He takes the material and puts it as living stones, as we saw in 1 Peter, and places them where they belong. This is the work of his Spirit. You see, in 1 Peter 2, 4, and 5, we see his wonderful grace that we just read. In verse 9 and 10, his sovereign mercy. But all the confusion and wrong conceptions and attendant evils cannot frustrate the purpose of God. You see, here's what Satan does. This is so amazing what Satan does. Here is the truth that we're giving out. The word of God is truth. But Satan twists God's word into a lie. He does this so that the truth can be revealed. God gives us the truth so this truth can be revealed and reveals all lies. The truth reveals all lies. And we can know the truth, and the truth will set us free. So the Holy Spirit dwells. He dwells in the true believer's bodies, individual members of that body. And then we, as old, the, in the tabernacle, he dwells 
in the church through the Spirit. God does no longer dwell in an earthly house. God does no longer dwell in an earthly house, and yet he has his habitation here. Where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst through the Spirit. Now the churches are beginning to bring the world into the church, and we may have to go back to the homes the way the early church did. The believers must worship in spirit and in truth. The Father seeketh such to worship. When the growth and increase of the church shall be completed, it will be still and by the Holy Spirit. Only the Holy Spirit can work and through the Word of God. The Holy Spirit cannot work apart from the Word of God. We must know this, and we must worship in spirit and in truth, and that can only be done when we're giving out the Word of God. When the Holy Spirit is fully penetrating and possessing the whole glorified church, that the Father will dwell in it forever. This is the great work of redemption. And I pray that you know this. And if you don't, we're going to continue to add to these things. We're going to continue to learn what he wants us to know in these books. And we thank him for revealing to us all of these wonderful blessings. And then we read chapter 3, a verse in chapter 3. We see what he is telling us in these lessons. First of all, for this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles. If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery that we showed you last week, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, Paul is writing, whereby when you read Ephesians 3, now verse 4, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Read how many times it says by the Spirit that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. By the gospel. This is the only way that you can know these is through the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. So chapter 3 of Ephesians, this mystery is one body. Christ is the head, Ephesians 1, 22, and 23. Now, we all have to remember these. Write these down. And chapter 1, Ephesians 1, 32, 22, and 23. And hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of of him that filleth all in all. And then we see by the Spirit, according to the gift of the grace of God. You see, this is a gift. This is a gift that he's given to us. So the mystery of his will, the oneness that we have together, you know, there's no division with the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God unites and never divides. It's his blood that unites us into one body. One body, unity in that body to serve him and to live for him. Now this mystery of the body was made known. That is the local church. The church is the assembled group of believers. The body becomes the true church. The assembly takes place in the rapture. The body of Christ must unite the head, we must be united. That's why the rapture must take place. If you don't believe in the rapture, you must be born again 
and ask the Lord to reveal these truths. So we will become a bride. We're the bride of Christ and he's the bridegroom. So we have to be united, the body and the head, the bride and the bridegroom. And he teaches us this in Revelation 19, 7 and 8. The mystery of the indwelling Christ is now made manifest to his saints. We're saints of God. That's the only way you can be a saint. Read these lessons and study them and show what God has done for us. This is the most amazing thing in the world. The first three chapters we see our heavenly walk, we see our heavenly love, and our heavenly grace. This is what God has for us as true believers. And then in Galatians 3.28. Now, I won't get time to go into these today, but we will do these next week. Galatians 3.28. There is neither Jew nor Greek, neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, but ye are all one in Christ. You must be born again to receive this gift. And then in Colossians 1, 24, as you study these lessons, you will see there is not another man under heaven whereby you must be saved. Chapter verse 1 of Colossians 24. You who now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. You must rejoice in these truths today.